everybody back to the Independent Investor Channel for a weekly update on Hylion Holdings. Uh, I uh, hesitated on even putting this video out this week, to be honest with you. I thought perhaps maybe I could just take the week off um, like Hylion has seemingly done. Um, but uh, remember why I do this project. I don't do it for Hylion. I don't do it for myself either. I do it for the would-be share owners out there that hold this company look to materialize on benefits that I think are absolutely still in play with Hylion. I think it's important to continue to um, keep the topic hot with this company. Um, now, that's not to suggest that there aren't things going on with Hylion. Um, I, I think the forward-reaching uh, initiatives that they have probably do not raise to the level of any type of public engagement in this particular juncture and being in quiet period here uh, scheduled to report on its Q4 closed down 2022 as the fiscal year. Um, and I don't know what to expect. Uh, I am rest assured um, acknowledging that from the latter part of 2022, if not for the majority of 2022, and going into the front half of 2023, we are in a bridging process right now. Um, what we are bridging to uh, is anybody's guess. We have to look at the uh, potential to realize in part or in some degree uh, the promises made uh, of this company. But for those people out there that would suggest that Highland doesn't have a product, I would encourage you to look again. Um, I like my perspective on this because I read things on social media sometimes, and I, of, I often wonder if um, they truly understand how stupid they sound when they come out and offer their, their opinions about something. And then I wonder if it has some sort of motive or objective to it. So that's a lot of reason why. I will come out with a weekly video. I'm not going to come out with daily videos. I'm not going to inundate the channel with that type of activity. You also have to understand um, when I say I don't do this for Hylion, um, I do it indirectly, but I certainly don't do it directly. Um, as a matter of fact, I'd go so far as to suggest that my product is not appreciated at all. Um, uh, I believe that I've probably been um, completely shut off. Uh, of of any type of reply opportunity, and that's too bad. Um, that's too bad. I, I speak with CEOs on a weekly basis. Um, I'm covering companies right now that are actually exciting to to cover. And the difference between those companies and this company is um, I get paid by those companies. I don't get paid at all. I am not affiliated whatsoever with Hylion. That's why there are no disclaimers on this video at all, uh, outside of the fact that I do... Uh, own a fairly robust share ownership in Hylion um, and will continue to own that um, because my due diligence has been complete for quite some time. I think we are on a, we're in a current phase now in 2023 where unfortunately we've done everything we could possibly do to run off every single retail investor um, that uh, thought they were strong enough um, uh, presumed they were strong enough, made the move like they were strong enough, and come to find out they were not strong enough. And um, in my heart of hearts, guys, I honestly cannot blame you. Um, this is not fun to cover anymore. Um, um, I'm an investor. So my perspective on this company and, and, and how this story has evolved up until now certainly speaks to my tone and tenor and my opinion and um, opinion on how the story has developed and how the company has um, really succeeded in putting forth a, a, a company stock representation that has done nothing but take from investors. Um, the run-up in the stock here has been short-lived. I know people are going to say, yeah, we're still up 30%. We, we've cut that in half. Um, we're, we're down significantly from the highs again. Um, a perfect time to go into a quiet period uh, by Hylion um, to allow themselves not to take advantage of any momentum at all. 
Um, there's been some comments out there that they that that the highly on community seems to believe that they are cared for. Uh, I beg to differ. Um, I, I I think that uh, highly on is is so focused on their goals, and verdict is still out on whether or not that focus is going to turn into something material. Um, because at the end of the day, this is a a fantastic story. Um, it is a, a fantastic uh, company with regard to the progress that they've made. But whether or not that story is going to materialize into something that even remotely represents what it is they promised to investors on the onset uh, is yet to be seen. So commenting here, middle of February 2023, in a period where I feel like the company is on ice, um, the stock is on ice. The, the stock market is in, in fritz. Uh, for the best I can gather, and we'll look for some color around this regarding the supply chain issues, is still very much alive and well. Um, progress with the OEMs is still muted, the best I can tell. Um, highly on garnering uh, orders to solidify their backlog has slowed. Uh, it has slowed to a snail's pace at this point. Um, so if their focus is on selling their product, I think they're going on their third annual ACT conference. And well, I guess the, the question is what, if any, has materialized out of that? You would expect that those guys are going and yeah, they're having a good time at the conference, but who are they speaking with? Uh, who are they um, really getting interest from? If we had understood the previous two ACT conferences and the ride drives that they go and burn up a bunch of CNG on um, investors back dollars to showcase their product, what has materialized out of it? What has really turned out uh, from a quantifiable basis on on sales orders, leads, et cetera? We don't know. Um, the 200 um, of the original orders that have been turned out uh, evidently uh, over the last uh, significant time frame, uh, especially going back into last year, was articulated as being the sole focus of Hylion uh, over over the, that same time period. DSV has just placed an order of 10, which is huge. Uh, these um, beginning orders that have gone in uh, these are great in really setting up the building blocks for something material in the back half of 2023. I keep saying that, and I almost want to catch myself full well knowing that my trust with this company is all but gone. And 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 again, there, there's going to be some people in the community, the investing community, who just expect me to come on with neon green pom-poms and jump up and down um, I've been doing this a long, long time. Stock investing is my life. Okay. Highly on could just dissolve away. I would be fine. Okay. Um, I'm making a fortune on some of my other companies that uh, I, if I emailed the CEO tomorrow, I would get a response immediately. Um, if I email uh, highly on investor relations, which I've done in the past, I can be rest assured, guaranteed 100% that I will get zero reciprocation, zero. Uh, and that is their very job is to provide that reciprocation. So putting out these weekly videos when there really isn't any substance, again, I hesitated on putting this product out. Um, but again, in the face of all of the adversity, in the in in the in the face of a time frame where it is probably the most difficult to gin up any type of excitement about this name, uh, to try to qualify the information that has been released as lean as it has been over the previous quarter, I would say, um, in the face of retail investors dumping the stock and turning that stock over to the institutions who are willing to sit on this name for five to 10 years plus. And I, since the beginning, have actually tried to tried to communicate to retail investors that they were going to have to invest in this company like institutional investors and not retail investors. I know this because the comments that come through on the story have dwindled. 
the interest in the Hylian story has dwindled, at least as far as my channel goes. Now, there are a lot of fantastic content creators, which have which has helped keep the story fresh on YouTube and kept it um, out there in the limelight to try to continue to keep whatever momentum is is there alive. Um, is momentum e even a necessary recipe for success at this point? Um, I, I would suggest that if you're feeling that there's a little bit of angst uh, in my delivery here, um, your sense is correct. If you're sensing that there is a level of frustration with the lack of progress here, um, there is. Uh, you're, you would be sensing the correct. Um, I think it would be easy to come on and just make up a bunch of hype with regard to this company that um, right now represents the largest holding in my portfolio. And I'm, I'm totally cool with that based on um, what it is that I think they are capable of doing. And I do believe that if, if, if they execute correctly, um, they will absolutely uh, find some, some material benefit from, but where are we left now? Um, in this ice age of trying to understand what strategic initiatives this company is is taking on. Um, did the Carno generator need to be brought on board when it was brought on board? Um, what short to medium term benefit other than a cash drag does it have on Hylion in the short and medium term? Um, will a company run out of uh, funding that they were able to generate through coming pub to public markets during the SPAC process? Will they actually start to turn out some revenues that will actually be able to be um, affixed to the company's stock price in way of ascertaining some level of value in the company? Um, outside of what was declared for 2021 at two million in revenue, and I think they'll do the same this time around. I, I, I don't expect that they close down 2022 with bells and whistles. We would have heard something. I think the company is somewhat hungry for those said bells and whistles. I'm not really sure if the interest is quite as significant as Thomas Healy would suggest. I'm skeptical. Um, it is not my job as a retail investor to just believe every CEO that comes across my desk and says, hey, we've got something special here. Um, as a matter of fact, I'm learning to grow even more skeptical of expecting what the CEO is paid to say uh, and and really taking that with, with a, a grain of salt in understanding that, you know, the public facing CEO perhaps maybe understands a significant amount difference and has to convey that to the public as opposed to what they know is going on behind the scenes. I don't know. Is there overwhelming interest in the product right now? I, I, I don't see it. I don't see it. Uh, we are in an ice age right now, and that interest that we could suspect to see now uh, is understood as to why we potentially don't see it now. But are we setting ourselves up for some accelerated movement toward what has been dubbed a, a, a latter part of 2023, beginning of 2024, as, as some made up ramp up of commercialization? I, I, I'm getting to a point where uh, I, don't, um, I don't see that that's going to happen. And I'm setting myself up for uh, a whole lot of the same in 2024. I'm setting myself up for the sheer reality, and it pains me to say this, that al although the consensus amongst the investor group is to earmark the end of 2023, beginning of 2024 as being that trans transformational time frame uh, for the company, and rightfully so, it absolutely should be. I mean, here, look, we're looking at what, three, three and a half, four years removed of its original IPO. And is it unfair to suggest that perhaps maybe ample time frame has been provided to Hylion up to now to start to generate, I don't know, something? Like effing something. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. If, if the interest is so overwhelming, 
and there's companies out there that are willing to put this in the fleets, then is it not safe to presume that at some point as we emerge from what has been a horrendous, horrendous ride as far as the stock goes? Now, the material evolution of the company right toward that end is just what it is as far as the necessary pedigree and the recipe toward that end. If they end up coming into some government contracts, if they start to really start to take advantage of the mandates and the incentive program that the government, both state and federal, have laid out, all of this discussion is for naught, okay? So I'm trying to give you a little bit of a, a, a frustrated uh, angle as well as the reality of the situation to not mingle the two. Because my goal on the Independent Investor Channel is to try to speak to people and relate with how they're feeling, okay? Relate with the fact that owning highly on holdings over the last three years has been absolutely horrible, horrible. I know there's people who bought it on the last run-up. FOMO bought the stock. Uh, and now just to incur the same old uh, performance of downtrending markets and down every day, I, the company was down every single day this week, I, every single day. There's no interest. There's no interest at all. If Hylion had that interest, um, they would put that out as far as some level of um, uh, some level of um, of progress being made on the industry front that there is indeed, some industry industry interest in this product um, that would somehow correlate with what Thomas Healy is talking about with this interest that we're supposed to believe him is there. Okay. Okay. Um, what's to keep the fleets from just staying with diesel? F it. I don't like any of the technology out there. There's reason to scoff at the Hylion opportunity, having to work through the OEMs, bottlenecking and jammed up and not being able to get their orders. Maybe the fact that highly on stock price at $3.16 would suggest potentially a company that isn't quite as strong as Thomas Healy suggests that it is. And the very fragment of strength that highly on has is on their balance sheet with regard to their current cash position that is being eroded away every single month that we burn up through operating expenditures that maybe they're rushing. Maybe they're not rushing at all. Maybe the results that have been garnered thus far would suggest that there's no sense of, 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 of rush. Maybe there's a false pretense of reliance on a cash position that this young company is going to understand quick and furious that that could be a fatal mistake because once the cash burns away all you're going to be left with is a company that has garnered whatever interest in the fleets that has built up a team of the best i can tell between two and three hundred people i don't i don't know which is really really small for what they want to do a company that has brought basically a non-commercially viable prototype to the marketplace and is being fleet tested right now by fleets. Ruan is involved right now uh, in their fleet trials. Um, I have no doubt that we're going to get a report at the conclusion of that Ruan, and they're going to say it was fantastic, and they saved a bunch of money, and the drivers like the product. And it will probably fall on deaf ears until 2024, and we won't hear from Ruan again. Am I being sour? Or am I basing my expectation on the track record that Hylion has built for us thus far? Expect nothing. Uh, and you'll be surprised. Um, expect that at the end of 2023, where the, we're, we're, we've got this commercially viable product and Winter validation is complete. We understand the results of that. We understand the results of the summer testing and validation, which will probably be rolled out here in a week and a half uh, during the February 2022 Q4 call. And we'll get more color around that. Perhaps maybe we won't. I don't know. Um, we'll have the same four analysts come on, JP Morgan, 
Uh, we'll have Cantor Fitzgerald. Uh, we will have um, we will have Goldman Sachs, uh, and we will have um, you know our favorites uh, go on there and ask the same idiotic questions. And we'll put on a puppet show like we typically do. Um, the analysts will come on and congratulate the company on the quarter. When in my perspective, they don't deserve any congratulations at all. Um, I think the work that they're doing behind the scenes and the work that I'm presuming that they're doing um, is 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 the very least that they should be doing. Um, I don't sense that there's a sense of urgency at all. I don't. Um, I think, unfortunately, they are um, haunched up on this idea that they've got plenty of cash to keep them to this material, to get them to this commercial stage, which is always what they said was going to basically close out the SPAC opportunity and say, look, we came to public markets to get to commercialization. Um, now, that's not what they said on the onset, but that's how the story has evolved now. It appears as if by the time we run out of money, we will have a commercially viable product to put to the marketplace to help with uh, reducing the carbon impact uh, for fleets. Uh, and then it'll be up up to the fleets. And if they they want the product, great. We'll we'll kill it and we'll crush it. And we'll do really good things. But if they don't want it, then that's all right. We'll just sell it off to somebody and and we'll move on. And see, all this time, the only person who doesn't have to have a sense of urgency is Thomas Healy. Why not? Why not just make up a story to come to public markets, put all this information out there? slowly sell off the stock to the tune of $30 million, right? Uh, and then just rest on the, the the laurels of just that. Look, I'm following through with my promise. I'm good. All I have to do is make a commercially viable product, tell everybody that everybody in the world is interested in the product, lead everybody along to suggest that people are interested in this product. And if by the time the day of reckoning comes and we run out of money, I've done my obligation to the tune of what I said that I would do, and that's present that to industry. It's just industry's fault because we find that industry is not that interested in going with a fossil fuel solution. Um, the incentives just aren't as rich as we suggested that they were. Uh, fleets are wanting to dabble in this technology, but not enough to keep us afloat and actually have us uh, garner uh, the ability to maintain this warehouse in Austin, Texas that we call home. Mm -hmm. There's been um, some fall off in the community for sure. And... The reason why I continue to come out with the weekly video is to give you an angle. And my angle now is completely independent. Um, I have not sold any shares, nor do I have any intention of, of selling shares. What it comes down to for me is $1. We are currently $1. $1 above the all-time low. We are $1 above the all-time low. And with the current trajectory, who's to say that this ice age that we are in, this neon green ice age of momentum for the stock, which I would chalk up to be moving at the speed of a glacier, would have me believe that perhaps maybe the all-time low is back in play again. Kills me to say it. I don't know. And I would love the viewing audience that tune in every single week to sit back and say, man, alive, Ryan, you're, you're, you're wrong. There's no way we see 206 again. Um, it is my job to define all possibilities within stock market investing. And with the current pace of this company, There's a little bit of I don't give a shit sense that I get from Hylion. I, I just don't see it. Um, I put in 16, 17, 18 hours a day. Um, two hours of those days are spent in the gym working out. I just don't sense the ferocity from our current CEO. And I do not see that that ferocity. And I, I'll go out on a limb and say that that ferocity is probably there. I just don't sense it. And my sense does not represent what happens in reality. 
Okay. It doesn't. So I'll probably suggest and go out on a limb that that ferocity is there, but where are the results? Something that really caught my attention this week was a tweet from um, a couple of the guys that I respect wholeheartedly. Okay. And he was sent a coffee cup. Congratulations, Andreas. I'm, I'm happy you got your kick coffee cup. Um, to me, it's kind of a kind of a shot in the side uh, a little bit, not because you got a coffee cup, but because somehow the suggestion was made that Hylion cares about share owners. Um, conversely, I'm currently in a project right now with a company that is worth 50 million in market cap. Mind you, Hylion's given back, what, 100 million in market cap. So they're probably sitting at around 575 right now at the time of shooting this video. Fuck it. Why not? It's all in a good week's, uh, all in a good week's give back, 14% off this week, I think, at least. Um, like I said, it was it was down every single day. But to suggest that Hylion cares about share owners is yet to be seen. If I asked Thomas Healy if he cared about share owners, he'd say absolutely 100%. I'm in it for the share owners and I'm in it for the shareholders of this company long term, both retail and institutions alike. The bottom line in stock market investing has nothing to do with whether or not I like the logo uh, or the title of the company or the CEO or the board or the employees that make up the company. As a publicly traded company, there is only one metric uh, that matters as far as a stock ownership and owning shares in said company matter, and that is revenues. You can say all you want. You can send all the coffee cups out there that you want. Um, hell, you you could you could tweet back a thank you to me, which would go a hell of a long way. Uh, I'm better with regard to my relationship with Hylion, absolutely. Um, I'll hold the shares. Um, they'll materialize to a million-dollar position. I have no doubt about that. But as far as my relationship with Hylion, these people need to stop walking around like their shit does not stink. Because the obligation to share owners is very real, very real. And I see that performance laid out way different and delivered upon by different CEOs out there in the business that have compensation locked up until they perform. There's been no such thing with Hylion. Thomas Healy is making significantly more than a vascular surgeon every single year to turn out $2 million of revenue on a company that is worth $600 million. If you carved out all the emotion from the Hylion story and you looked at the nuts and bolts of this thing, you would be hard pressed to find the level of deep value in the company that I see. I see it. And it's all going to fall on execution, okay? These guys could fall on tilt, screw up royally, miss something huge with the Hypertruck ERX, not meet CARB, NHTSA certification. It's going to be catastrophic for the stock. And catastrophic from these levels, go down to 25 cents, you know? It could go down to one penny. Um, I'm covering a company right now that trades for one cent. One cent makes more per year than Hylion. Oh, Ryan, you don't have to use yeah, this and that. That company has a market cap of $4 million. $4 million. It's the lowest market cap company that I cover on the Independent Investor Channel by far. It's the lowest. The next lowest is $20 million. This company has a market cap of $4 million. It makes $4 million a year. Last year, they'll turn in about $15 million for the year with no debt and just because they identified with the momentum of the stock, guess what executive uh, management did? They took an F and pay cut. They took a pay cut. Company trades on the New York Stock Exchange, right? I'm talking about Hylion. There's no way we would discuss something crazy like that. 
for me, the disconnect between the results that are being garnered and the results that we are setting up to be disappointed on. Again, I'm expecting nothing. Um, sour? Yeah. 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 So is everybody else. You got to give me some credit, man. I'm willing enough to put my pride aside and come onto social media and actually continually try to, in the face of zero appreciation, provide some clarity on this company and set ourselves up to an inevitable melting of the glacier, to an inevitable melting of this sluggish momentum. A momentum that falls on deaf ears anymore when DSV puts in an order of 10 with an obligation to buy 10 more. That was a 20 order from one of the biggest logistics fleets in the world. And guess what happened with the stock? Nothing. Nothing. You don't want to know why? Because the market, as imperfect as it is, is pretty good at sniffing out garbage. Now, it can go a long, long time attempting to sniff out that garbage, Tesla, without actually punishing a company for a long, long time. And <clears throat> by nature of not punishing a company, it organically creates this fear of missing out, especially amongst retail investors who just pile into companies based on momentum. Hylion has none, none. I hope they're using this time strategically to their advantage. I, I would like to emphasize hope. I would hope that they are taking advantage of this because the promise of delivery to the stock market and creating any type of churn or momentum on the company now is futile. I mean, they they could release a, a, a hundred ERX order on Monday. The stock wouldn't move. The stock would go down eight cents. The stock right now is staring squarely at Hylion and daring Hylion to make them to to prove them wrong. It is a prove it story. This message is not going to settle with everybody. I totally understand. Perhaps it's my mood, which right now, everything is absolutely perfect. It's plugging along. And to be honest with you, to be able to share other stories with companies with management who are willing to talk to me. Okay. Hylion is not in that camp. Okay. A retweet to somebody who's provided thousands and thousands of dollars, not me, others, a retweet saying, Hey, I have the, a one line BS tweet and everybody loses their F in mind or a coffee cup that gets rendered to one of the, uh, the discord members that I have the utmost, utmost respect to is kind of a kick in the teeth. It's kind of a kick in the teeth. I don't give a shit about shirts and hats and coffee mugs. I don't give a shit about that. Okay. Um, with the money that I've I've I'm down in this current position, um, I could probably start a coffee mug business with a brick and mortar store and a coffee shop and a and a legitimate business with a license uh, and full overhead paid for a year. Okay. Highlands busy. I get it. Investor relations. I'm not sure if they're on the phone every single day with the institutions. Who knows? Probably. Um, if you're not on the inside, you are on the outside. And my friends, I hate to suggest that we are on the outside looking in on this story. And it appears as if Hylion has, over the last three years, defined for themselves a reputation that is second to none, sterling. I mean, this company in the last three years is free of controversy. The wonderful job, wonderful job, full credit to the CEO and the team and the board of directors, zero controversy. But do they have the goods enough to know that they don't have to press the issue to manufacture any type of hype now, knowing that the momentum that I spoke about 
is only going to fall on deaf ears, perhaps. If I was deploying a little bit of strategery, I would take that all day to the bank and be like, look, guys, we've been given a gift. Okay. Stock's going to trade in between two and five dollars for the next, I mean, who knows, until we can actually materialize and really start to put some back to back to back to back to back to back orders in place. I suggested that perhaps 2022, 2023 could have been that time to build against the back order. We're not there. Um, this this interest that Thomas Healy's talking about, this might be like, hey, Thomas, you want to go get a cup of coffee? Uh, what's your favorite coffee? And Thomas gets really excited about Pike Place coffee at Starbucks. And the client that he's looking to share the Hylian story with also suggests, I love Pike Place coffee too. I'm super excited. Let's order it together. If that's the level of interest that we're looking to, to garner in the class eight trucking space and the logistics fleet, great. Because the material the material results are just not stacking up right now, man. They're not. They should be they should be pumping in 50 orders of hybrids constantly. Um, where they're going to make the installs, I have no idea what that could mean to solidify the backlog and order book to put the customers on inev an inevitable queue to the future. Hey, well, yeah, we'll get you installed by, by 2030 at some point because they don't have the install capability to, 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 to garner all these orders that they say there's such an interest for Pike Place. So I'm stuck in a bit of a quandary looking to uh, foot stomp the pulse of where we are. Um, I, I, I am enjoying some amazing confidence in the micro cap space and some of these companies that I'm covering. Um, unfortunately, I, I'm, I'm not a bullshitter. I'm, I'm not going to come on to social media and say, Hey, I'm super excited about sharing these, st this story anymore. Cause I'm not, I'm not. There's nothing material. I looked back over the week, guys. I looked back. Is there anything to share from this week? Nothing. I almost did not provide this content this week. I almost did not because there was nothing to share. F it. Just take the week off like Hylion did. Again, they're in quiet period. Um, and perhaps maybe that's for phenomenal reason. Perhaps maybe I should be the one that calls in during this call on 2022 or 2023 this Q4 call on the 22nd of February and say, hey, Thomas, hey, I'm from the bottom of my heart, congratulations. You had a phenomenal quarter. No, you didn't. No, you didn't because your results are not materializing. Could they be building the backlog? Yes, they could. They're not. Okay. Are we marching toward an inevitable increase in orders? I don't know. Uh, house fleet, house certification coming. House fleet validation coming. Is Ruan really enjoying the product. I don't know. You probably have to spend two weeks taking your technical team down there to shoot some professional video to have Ruan say what I just said during the filming of this video. We like the product. It was quiet. It towed well. It ran well. We really love the product. And and it, it will end at that. Okay. We're not, we're good. We're getting free advertisement flying the flag of Hylion by them putting us on the Hypertruck Innovation Council. This is fantastic. We'll place our order when we come to version 10 of the Hypertruck, and they've worked out all the kinks that are inevitable of new technology. All right. I'm being a little bit abrasive this week, if not a lot abrasive. I get it. Okay. You can hate me for it. That's fine. But I had nothing from this week. Nothing. I don't have appreciation from this company. I don't have any news. I don't have any major catalysts at all. And the same old, same old is still withstanding with this company. The degradation of the current cash, the questions surrounding the certification, the questions surrounding the winter validation and testing and the results that existed therein, this renewed interest from fleets of Hylion that is somehow just now up until today's date discussion uh, and, and and an apparent uh, communication to would-be share owners that this, this interest is somehow overwhelming. <laughs> What's it going to mean? 
where do we go from here? Do we test the lows? Do we settle out to get a few more dollars of appreciation marked $1 above the all-time high right now? Is that little iota of, 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 of impression of a company that I find is extremely undervalued? Yes. But is it? Is it? Compared against the stock that I talked about that's generating more revenue carrying less op and capex than Hylion, made $15 million last year, is worth $4 million in market cap, $4 million, okay? Not $650 million or six hundred or five seventy five, dollars or $575, wherever Hylion is right now, to garner top-end revenues of $2 million, $2 million. I leave you with this, my friends. Stepping into this February quarter, don't expect a whole lot. Uh, expect a lot of the same. Um, I'll give it to you now. Uh, over the quarter, we made five hundred thousand uh, dollars. We've uh, expanded our uh, fleet trials with Ruwan, who we're engaged with now. Um, the incentives, the ACT and the AM, AMT or AC, whatever the F the and mandates are, are still out there looming. Um, we haven't uh, um, we haven't benefited or, or identified that wool material benefit. We qualify for them. That's all great and plenty, but um, evidently the fleets are still thinking about whether or not they want to take on orders. Um, we added Mr. Craig to the board. Um, what else do we have? Um, we partnered with Dairy Western, Western Dairy Transports. That's going to be the call. No surprises. Uh, for a company that is closer to a half a billion dollars, this company needs to start making some monumental catalysts, okay? Not the stories, not these meet and greets, not these expos where they go and they sit with a bunch of morons minus the Chevron rep who is there who don't think that fossil fuels are going to have a place 10 years from now that somehow we're going to do away with all fossil fuels and that somehow we can just create electricity out of our ass without the compliments and the coal-fired re reactors and somehow we're just going to up upgrade the entire world with nuclear reactors and that's going to somehow power our, our future. A little bit different tone this week, guys. Uh, again, I didn't have a whole lot this week. But I certainly wanted to discuss perhaps maybe and touch on the tone of the investment right here. Bottom line, you, we're going to have to weather the storm. As tough as it is and as tough as it will probably continue to be uh, based on the rut that Hylion has defined for themselves, um, I would just say pitch a tent um, and enjoy being in that rut for a while. Um, if we're going to be in that rut for the remainder of this year, enjoy. I'll cook some hot dogs with you over an open campfire. Uh, if we're going to continue to enjoy that rut because uh, fleets are slow to adopt, great, no problem. Um, I, I can go, I can hunt, okay. And some of you guys may be good trappers. Um, we can trap some things in our rut uh, so that we can survive and see this thing to what I feel is a, a, a potential for something. So keep on keeping on with regard to the hope that Hylion has driven uh, all shareholders into oblivion in understanding that just one month ago, based on hype, if you had just invested in stock, you would have doubled your money 100%. Tesla is up 100% just a month ago. Hylion currently sits at $3 a share. And it's everything that they can do to absolutely solidify their place in the rut. And I'm hard pressed to suggest that they don't deserve to be there at the current juncture until they wake up, uh, pull their heads out of their ass and realize that they're going to have to start making some churn in this class eight space. Guys, I appreciate you turning into the totality of the video. Sorry about the negative connotation. That's just how I feel. There was nothing going on. We are in quiet period. Expect nothing from the earnings coming on. Leave your comments at the body, bottom of the video. Subscribe to the channel. If you like the content coming through, we will continue to cover this uh, company. But I tell you what, this was a real um, this was a real tough one for me to, to gin up the motivation. First time ever in covering the company. Um, and 
they've been a threat away of losing me uh, for a lot of months. I'm on fumes right now providing uh, free help to this company. I don't know what else to do. If people don't want me to continue to do this product, just tell me, man. Say, hey, I, I don't want you to do the product anymore. Um, Hylion doesn't need you. I, I love, I've Hylion sent me a one-liner and said, hey, Ryan, we appreciate it, but can you please stop doing content on our company? I, I would. I would cease this to exist and I would be better for it, but I do it for the would-be investors out there that I think benefit from the message. Guys, thank you so much for tuning into the message and good luck in your investment future. Thank you.